today's job is uh, replacing some lead acid batteries on a existing standalone system. I uh, looked at this job probably three or four months ago. Um, batteries are failing. I think the system's about 15 years old. It's only a small system, unlike a weekender up in Lower Chittering. Uh, so we're going to replace the lead acid batteries with some power plus energy uh, 2433s. So it's a 24 volt system, which was um, a little difficult sourcing batteries for it. Um, power Plus normally have plenty of stock, but uh, just with the current situation with uh, um, global supplies, it's, uh, I had to source some batteries from the east coast. So on my way to Kenwick to finally pick up the batteries, and uh, then I'll be driving out to a beautiful place in Perth called Lower Chittering. Um, nice little creek crossing to get to the little house up on the hill. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. Um, hopefully it's not too deep and the van can get through it. I think we should be okay. Um, the existing system is an Outback MX60 MPPT or solar regulator or charge control or whatever you want to call it. Um, that should be fine. I'm familiar with them. That shouldn't be an issue. Uh, the inverter charger though is a Schneider Connects, the model number escapes me, 2440 or something like that. Anyway, I'm not familiar with them, um, but I've downloaded the manual. I think I've got everything I need to program it um, so that everything is working as it should be. Righto. So, grab the batteries, then I'll take another video once we get to the property. So if there's one thing I love about my job, it's the places it takes me. I'd um, probably live on a farm if I didn't do what I do, but uh, at least this way I'll get my rural fix and get to get out in the country a bit. So that's the house over there on the hill. Uh, but we've got to go through this creek here, which I'm not quite sure about. Um, the last time I tried to cross this in the van, uh, the side step bottomed out on these rocks here. Um, but it doesn't look too bad. It's only shallow, but this is a van. It's got bugger all ground clearance. Look, we'll just get out and have a quick look first. So my side step bellied out on these rocks, but I've since taken the side step off. It's not deep, it's not deep at all. Beautiful. So, the van's a four motion, it's not a proper four wheel drive. Um, I had a side step on there, which really limited my ground clearance, it would belly out. But that's gone now. I took that off on the weekend knowing I was going to have to come here. So, should be right. Let's see how we go. Now we've got a bit of a steep climb up the driveway to get to the house, which hopefully doesn't have any, uh, like, we've had a lot of rain up here. So hopefully it doesn't have any, like, clay to it because if I start sliding down the hill, the car's not going to stop, that's for sure. It's just going to slide all the way down the bottom. So far, so good. Sounds like the tow hitch is dragging a bit. Whoop, dragging a lot. Dragging a hell of a lot. There we go, it's off. It's only shallow. Probably going to bottom out here. No, all good. Oh, 
well, hopefully that didn't damage his uh, rock layout on that little creek crossing because he's obviously put those rocks there to stop the erosion and give the cars a bit of traction. It had like a wire mesh fence holding it all down which is pretty clever but I think my uh, it's either the jockey wheel or the tow bar itself probably dislodged a couple of the rocks so I'll check that out on the way back. Beautiful spot. Spring out here at the moment. This is just a weekend duck. It's not a working farm or anything like that. steep as I remember. That should be fine apart from the erosion from the water. I think that'll be a problem because the van doesn't have the wheel travel. But it would certainly be good if I could get all the way up there because I don't want to have to take everything up on a trolley. Look at that, beautiful. Rolling hills, green fields, spring times so all the flowers are out. My hay fever's going nuts. Yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna get up here, that's problem for sure I'll try might be able to go to the left of that hole a bit and, uh, get up there give it a crack gate I should be able to go to the left and just avoid that hole so far so good so I managed to avoid that hole bit of wheel spin but not too bad I think if it had recently rained, I'd probably be in a bit of strife, but we're doing all right. Well, that went better than I thought, to be honest. Alright, so I'll quickly show you. Sorry I'm all nasally and sniffly, it probably sounds like terrible, but uh, I have got a cold. Uh, so that's the existing off-grid system tucked away under there. In that shed is our lead acid batteries. This would obviously no longer comply with standards even close. We've got four shitty lead acid batteries and in here this bit's all been done well. So there it is again not much of that would comply these days but um, back in the day that was uh, a really good job nicely done. So that's our Outback MX60 charge controller. Everything's still running and doing what it should. Um, it's just not holding any charge. That's how Schneider connects 
um, inverter charger battery leads coming out from the battery shed fuses they definitely wouldn't comply um, and then fuses going into the inverter charger it has got comms to the inverter interface inside which I'll need to use to change the parameters in the inverter that must be this cable going up there then off into the house and it has also got a generator in the shed over there which will um i believe was a standby generator and I, I believe it had auto start and i think i think this is for the generator start ags i'm guessing that's automatic generator start but apparently it doesn't work anymore so hopefully they don't want that sorted out because apparently it's a bit of a nightmare i'm not familiar with these this is my first one not too excited about it but i'll work it out we'll get there all right we'll get into it cheers all right all done here now i've done the battery swap over i'm just doing a bit of a test i've got a bit of a load on i've got the grill i've had the kettle on the toaster on um all those three uh, flattened the battery pretty quick. It went down to about half. I've still got the grill on, so that's drawing just under two kilowatts. And um, it's pretty sunny outside. Um, but uh, and there's only a small amount of panels up there. There's only I think nine hundred and ninety watt panels or something like that. And um, that's bringing the battery back up beautifully now. Um, so everything went really well. Um, I'll just turn this off before I forget and then I'll take you down and show you the batteries yeah, everything's off all right so that's the screen they've got in the house here for the connect uh, Schneider um, inverted inverter charger <clears throat> sorry i'm still not feeling so good um they've used the generator for this one as a manual start i've since found out so if the battery gets low they start the generator manually and then um turn it off as 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 the battery's full um all right so that's that that all works well the configuration actually was pretty easy just followed the instructions I found online in the instruction booklet. So that's all the old lead acid batteries. Um, they're six volt, eight hundred and fifty amp hour each, making up a twenty four volt system. Now obviously, with the lead acid batteries, they um, these are a wet or a flooded battery, so these needed maintenance. So uh, as the owner was saying, in summer they generally don't come up here um but they'd have to come up to maintain the batteries to um, water them and make sure the electrolyte levels are at the um correct amount so they didn't destroy the batteries the batteries are pretty old they're 15 odd years old i believe um so they've had a good run out of them um but yeah they're, they're well and truly done now so in fact i think some of them have actually got holes in them they've perforated because in the tub there you can see it there there's actually got water in it which i think is acid that's leaked out of the batteries so i think the batteries have actually ruptured and then leaked um because it can't be rainwater because where they were they couldn't get any rainwater on them unless when he's been refilling and he's accidentally slipped and uh, dribbled it down the side which is possible over 15 years of filling them up um so here's the batteries so this is the power plus energy cabinet very neat little cabinet this one can take three batteries uh, i've only got two in there which i think will be adequate for them judging by what they tell me um this is a pre-made cabinet that i can buy from power plus energy that's the pw3 um can take three batteries whether it be 24 volt 48 volt um not sure about the 120 volts they fit in here i'm not familiar with the 120s um but very neat little bus bus system down there each battery's got its own circuit breaker or isolator on it 
I'll have to put some labels on here just to make sure it's all nice and compliant. And then um, I've just fixed that, so that's mounted solid to this foundation, which is steel foundation, which is actually concreted in, so that worked out really well. Um, just a bit of old solar rail on the bottom there um, to get it nice and level. And then back in here, got the MPPT, you can see we've got 93 volts coming in, 27.5 volts coming out. And at the moment it's putting 53 amps into the batteries after I've had that load on it. Um, so it all went really well, job's finished. And um, they've got the advantage of the lithium batteries now, which require zero maintenance. Uh, so they won't have to um, come up anymore during summer um, to do any maintenance on it. They can just leave it. All right. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe if you're enjoying the videos I make. Cheers.